Hello and welcome to Star Citizen Sunday with me, Ryan, aka Sifu Messiah. This is a weekly show which covers everything from the world of Star Citizen over the past week. Links can be found in the description for everything we discuss, so let's get on with it. I'm afraid it's another two-parter this week. In part one, we have 10th of the Artists and the latest around the verse. Part two will cover the Star Marine update and the Retaliator modules Q&A. I'd just like to say a quick thank you to all patrons as you are really helping make these Star Citizen Sunday videos possible. If you are interested in becoming a patron, head over to our Patreon page using the link in the description. Thank you. Okay, so we're kicking off this week with a 10 for the artist. This is episode 4. I have not chosen all the questions as, as usual, they are often just to do with how to become an artist, their opinions and so forth. Please, by all means, check it out if you are interested in becoming an artist or any anything along those lines, as it could probably help you out. Starting with the first question, will the paint on a ship when you first buy it look new or battered? For example, the Taurus looks marked and scratched at the moment. Are we buying new ships? And they say, yes, you are buying new ships. In the game world, when you purchase a ship, it will be brand new. You. Then, obviously, once it comes out of the showroom, it'll degrade over time. You can get it cleaned and repaired. But they say they did this early with the early ships because they wanted to know what it looks like and get that sorted first. The newer ships that are coming online, like the Retaliator, he says, are a lot cleaner and not as much scratched and so forth. But I do remember a while ago, some ships like the Avenger are, in a way, second-hand. And I think it was the Avenger that used to be the military ships, or was it something else, maybe the Hornet or the, something along those lines, where they were pre-used ships, so they are naturally going to be scratched etc so i think over time obviously if you buy a ship within the persistent universe it's going to be brand new but he did say that this is going to happen with clothing as well you buy your clothing in the pu it won't be worn then over time jeans will fade you'll get dirt on your pants it says the pristine when bought but then obviously they get handed down you can sell them second hand is something they also mentioned so they won't be brand new they'll have like a used look so maybe there's that fashionista terra casual used you know buy second hand i don't know we'll we'll ignore that for now anyway next question is can we see more concept art of ships that we haven't seen for a while. For example, the Banu Merchantman and the Drake Caterpillar. And they say in general, you will see original concept when they first block out the ships or, you know, create the ships. Later on, when they're blocking out the interiors and sort of bringing the design online, we will see more likely interior shots. So once they've got the concepts already done, the chances of us seeing more concept would be unlikely due to the fact that it's not necessary. They did say the Vanguard is coming soon, so they've been working on the interior for the Vanguard and we should see them but also they don't show off every single picture because they want to keep the hype so they don't want to just throw stuff out and then everyone just gets so used to it that it's nothing exciting but they did mention that we will see some cool concept stuff in the very near future so next question is how will helmets work on multi-monitor displays will the other monitors be covered by the helmet interior so if you have a three monitor display we know that the the helmets are actually quite compact or they feel like you know, you're gonna get the impression you're inside the helmet like you would if you actually wore the helmet so would this work with a three well, the multi-monitor display and they say they're not too sure yet design is actually working on it and a way to make it work because so far if they if they did allow this to have a much more bigger field of view then you would have a significant advantage with three monitors over someone without three monitors but with things like the rift they're not sure they they're they are still working on it and they did say that if you've got any suggestions on how it will how it should work or how you want it to work you're welcome to put them in the forums again we are still fleshing out this game together so they want to know what your opinions are so fourth question is do you have style guides for non-combat items and clothing and they say yes they always have style guides for everything be it military non-military everything will have a style guide so they mentioned things like the terror casual fashion is it's got its own style guide and there's a whole fashion line with tons and tons of clothing is what they actually said there's tons of clothing coming online and the things like the armor that we see in the demos currently are really very preliminary in what they want to do and with the scope that they want to take it to there will be so much more customization to your armor to your clothing and there will be much better detail as well it's only what they've got so far for the current demos they said in about a couple of months we will start seeing some of the clothing tech and some of the clothing come online with the social module falling at the end of this month fingers crossed they have said that in the first drop there will not be additional clothing but then there's next drops and the, the the more after that we will start getting more clothing we can buy clothing we can try it on we can change our clothes so eventually we'll see it and it did say sort of a couple of months but they were a bit shifty about it so we'll see anyway moving on will other helmets be closed at the back as you can still see the skin of the neck and that will likely cause problems in space now they say that they are currently working on a fix to cover up the neck 
and they're thinking of a way to make this sort of modular bridge to cover. So in my opinion, the way I see it, it's very much like Dead Space, you know, your mechanical helmet rolls down. So it'll be in a similar way, your helmet will be separate, but it will attach to your neck cover. He said it's only like this because originally the Star Marines or the, the, the people fighting on the space station were not supposed to be exposed to space. It was only supposed to be FPS and space separate. And then obviously things coming online like breaching the hull or transversing from space stations to space as well. It's only now that they've really started to see that there's a need for this full cover of the body. So they are working on it and we shall see that later on down the line. So the final question I picked out was, are we going to come across some non-humanoid alien races in the verse? And they say, absolutely. They've been designing them now, so if they don't, they're going to be disappointed. But they're spending a lot of time making these alien races. There are some super cool races, they say, and obviously ships specifically designed for them. The first lot we'll see will be very humanoid, like the Banu, the Jan, even the Vandul are quite human in themselves but then later on we shall see different types some areas you go in space you will actually be the minority as a human they're going to get the main races done first get them polished get them up to scratch and then they'll show on some different ones later down the line very excited for this because in all fairness i would actually rather keep the other alien races that we don't know about to a secret a lot of fear comes from the unknown so if you do not recognize this type of alien if you just see a vandal you'll just know it's a vandal you'll have some idea of how to defeat them and you know they, they'll have a weakness if you see something completely unknown before for the first time not only will it be absolutely crazy when you see it and you'll freak and start screaming running around frantically hopefully not but anyway it will be exciting plus it will allow you to report the first sightings of this alien to the news medias if there's fan media fan news sites like i'm planning on doing then you can get in touch with me show me some pictures i can put it up make a news report of it there's so much scope if they keep it quiet if they don't show everything first off, as soon as you see it, you'll already know what it is. So that's my opinion anyway. That was 10 for the artist. Tell me your thoughts. So next up is Around the Verse episode 56. As always, it starts with the Empire Report. Tonight on the Empire Report, Scandal in Seoul. Igor Khan, Moscow's embattled nightclub magnate, filed suit against the advocacy today. Did agents really plant neon on him following his arrest last week? Though his title may only be honorary, Julio Fong, the so-called mayor of the marina on Helios 2, is looking to shake things up for the planet's wealthy inhabitants. See why some are saying enough is enough. Kids call it the Hydrofroze Head Rush. A popular frozen beverage is far from dangerous, but what some kids are doing with it can be. We'll uncover the truth behind the trend tonight. All that and more on the next Empire Report at 2200 FET. So Ben is on his own this week as Sandy is apparently on a secret mission in the UK. They did not delve into why or what as it's a secret mission, I suppose. So Ben explains that first off, the 1.1.6 is live and I've noticed over the past couple of days that 1.1.6 Alpha or A is now live as well. With 1.1.6, the Glaive is flyable. The first pilot to actually win one was Cylon or Fearless Thunder God and he actually was the first to achieve the 18 waves of Vandal Swarm. So congratulations to him. He said, Ben explained that Gamescom was excellent. It went really well. They were very happy with it. Also, something very exciting is obviously we saw SciTech are creating the joysticks. The joysticks look amazing. I'm so excited for them. Really hyped. But also something really amazing that SciTech are doing in conjunction with Star Citizen is they're doing it as an open development. So very much like how Star Citizen is being created. We shall see the development over time. It's not going to be behind closed doors. They're going to allow for community input. We can say what we want from our own joysticks i mean they won't be personal to each person but we can actually put input to my knowledge that's the first time this has ever been done and it's very exciting we're going to see it as it develops anyway attendees from gamescom got foam gladius planes that they can throw around uh, a constellation pin which is part of a, a series of pins a copy of hunter which is a cool sort of art magazine which is fan made and a poster of cologne in 2945 signed by all the people at cig very very cool anyway there's a new video for new backers to the site there's apparently been a big increase in backers which is probably in cause of the gamescom demo so welcome to all if you are watching for the first time and also thank you if you have subscribed really appreciate that this little video they made for the new backers will be the first thing they see it's only short i'll play it now so you can see it but also there's going to be a free flight for people using the code gamescom 2015 so so if you do not have access to arena commander just yet use gamescom 2015 i'll try and find a link of where you can use it and then you can 
play Arena Commander for free. So, news from around the verse. Starting with Santa Monica CIG, they are working on the Vanguard variants and the Herald. They're gearing towards Arena Commander 2.0. There's a few patches coming in between then and now, obviously we know. Social module and potentially FPS if they ever get that finished. It's a long road ahead, they say, but large milestones are out of the way now, so it should be all guns blazing getting there. Ilphonic are retargeting the new rig animations. They are working through the cover system, which is procedural, very much like you saw on Far Cry, where if you start aiming down the sights, you will automatically pop out from cover. Also, if you just hold the fire button, you will shoot out as well, like you would expect. And the are to do a full rework on all weapons. So, CRG in Austin, they're talking about the social modules and then beyond. They are polishing the emotes and chat system. They're revising the UI and making sure that Art Core is going to look absolutely amazing and beautiful and I cannot wait to get in there. Down the road, they say Pete Mackey is working on commodities. So this is, he says it's like a Star Citizen periodic table of elements. Like the real world, but he's shifting it around a bit because obviously this is 900 and odd years in the future. Tier 1 is what he's calling it for the first level of commodities. So these are your root sort of commodities like raw materials like iron, copper, which you can mine from asteroids and then obviously tier two may be certain commodities that have been combined together or smelted and so forth so he's working on that and that is what we will see when we start buying and selling and mining things so foundry 42 in the uk they're talking about the visual effects from gamescom so everything from the steam we saw on the retaliator when the power came back on to the ambience of the you know, quantum drive they did say that the quantum drive is not final but they're getting there it's still needing a bit of vamping up and looking cool but it's a good demonstration of what they're expecting also they are responsible for the constellation explosion they say they're very happy with it and I am um, I was blown away by <laughs> no pun intended by the Connie explosion it looked amazing they wanted to get an epic sense of big ship explosion so when you see a ship explode it's going to look incredible again though not 100% final so there is still work to be done but if that's where they're going then I am more than happy from there we met with Alexis who is telling us about the subscribers corner this month's flare is the Starfarer Taketsu model now this isn't the Gemini model that you'll get if you bought the Starfarer Gemini this is just a separate one you will still get a different model when they have finished that for the Gemini. Also, the scythe is unlocked for all Imperator subscribers, and the Gamescom trophy is available in our hangars if you are a subscriber now, but you can also buy it. These trophies are little things they do, sort of an in fiction congratulations, you were part of the team around this time. So, ship shape this week was not with Lisa Rahanian, it was with Darian Vorlik as he was talking about the ghost system. Now, this is spelt G O S T, this stands for the Game Object State Machine, and this is how everything is organized into states and then bunched against again into different state groups and each will determine the state of each part of the ship so for example the landing gear for example has three different states it has retracted deploying and deployed and this allows ships to recognize and to know what state the landing gear is in another example he says is say a locked door it has two states locked or unlocked if you start going closer to this door it will recognize whether you have a matching key to access that particular door and if you do not then you will not get access also we saw the red team during the Gamescom demo as they turned on the power this is part of the game object state so you do that and it kicks all these things and it just triggers things so it knows the ship knows what needs to be to be happening when a good example he gave as well was if your ship takes more than 70% damage then it can engage warning lights if it takes any more then the critical lights and, and sirens can start flashing sparks will start flying around and you've got to eject they say they're still working on it but it's coming along really well and like we saw in the demo it's looking very promising this is a very important system that we will need for all the different systems and objects to interact with in your ship. Very cool, very important. So there's new pledge items. We have the Retaliator modular system, which gives you different modules to create your own variant for the Retaliator. This is just the start. I covered it last week. They did say there's about six-ish more, half a dozen more coming down the line. Also, the 2945 Gamescom trophy, which the subscribers get, is available to buy in the pledge store. And also track jackets, which we saw Chris Roberts wearing at the Gamescom event or giving away his own personal track jacket. They are still available. Please head over there if you are interested in purchasing any of them. I've got the link in the description. Any of you who are interested in the character design competition, it's still in the works, so information will come along soon. 
the most valuable post this week goes to the Gamescom volunteers. People could volunteer to go along and help, and they say they could not have done it without them. They were a great help, so they are the most valuable people this week. And the sneak peek looks like more clothing and some form of Google Glass style glasses. Unsure what it is, but we shall find out in reverse the verse. And also, all Arena Commander people can now free fly the Merlin this week. It is open for the public to try out, so please get in there and give it a go. That was around the verse. Tell me your thoughts. So also this week there was a Star Marine update and the Retaliator modules Q&A which I will cover in part 2 of Star Citizen Sunday. My favourite post this week was titled Mining Rocks August 2945 which is a Schubert Interstellar employee newsletter. This was particularly awesome for me as it was written in fiction as if you were an actual employee of the Schubert mining stations. I highly suggest reading it. It has so much cool little information in there. Possibly stuff that could give us an insight into some gameplay but either way it was definitely definitely worth reading. There was a Gamescom wrap-up post which details what we saw at Gamescom. Do not forget I have a coverage video that I did previously of the Gamescom footage. Check that out if you are interested rather than reading. Bug Smashers episode 8 was out so again check the description if you'd like to watch that. As announced in episode 56 of Around the Verse, August subscriber flare was released which is the Takietsu Starfarer model. It does look wonderful. And finally a post about the Merlin free flight was the last post we had this week. Okay, so on a final note, we have affiliated with Razer as we feel they make excellent gaming products and if you want to help our channel out, plus buy amazing hardware, use the link in our description and we'll get a little kickback every time a product is bought. So yet again, we have come to the end of the show. I just want to say a big thank you to all our subscribers and a massive thank you to all our patrons. You are truly helping our channel grow. If you are interested or able to help us out in way of a monthly donation from as little as $1 to any amount you deem fit, check out our Patreon page in the description. This really, really helps our channel to create more videos, better quality videos, and it allows us to get better hardware, better software, plus it allows us to spend more time on creating the videos. Don't forget to subscribe, comment if you have anything to say, show me the love by hitting the like button, and share it with all your friends and enemies. Thank you for watching, and I shall see you in next week's show.